Now, Nigeria Labour Congress NLC has accused the federal government of plot to frame up innocent citizens on trumped uh, up charges over the just concluded nationwide and bad governance protests, saying this is not the first protest in Nigeria and will not be the last. NLC in a communique on the communique at the end of its emergency national executive meeting or council meeting on Saturday night called on the government to jettison the plot and convene an inclusive stakeholders conclave to discuss the pressing issues confronting Nigeria. According to Congress, the conference should chart a path forward that would address the root causes of the current unrest, hunger, poverty, inflation, insecurity, and widespread dissatisfaction with government policies. The communique signed by the president of NLC, Joe Ajero, reads in part, the net once again condemns the killing of innocent protesters who were peacefully expressing their grievances against the harsh policies of the government. We demand an immediate cessation of these attacks and call on the government to declare a national day of mourning for those who lost their lives and properties during the protest. Additionally, all security agencies responsible for these tragic deaths must be held accountable, especially the police. And they are calling for immediate release of detainees and trade unionists arrested either in their homes or relaxation joints. This is the only way governments can show good faith and begin the healing of the nation. They condemn plans to frame up innocent citizens on trumped up charges. Um, they said we must understand that this is not the first protest in Nigeria and will not be the last. Neck wonders why this administration is criminalizing protests and have renewed clamp down on Marxists, socialists, and those who hold different shades of leftist ideologies as it quoting a neoliberal dictatorship. And uh, they also talked about national dialogue where they were calling on the government to convene an inclusive stakeholders conclave to discuss the pressing issues that are confronting Nigeria and chat a path towards the uh, forward that addresses the root cause of the current arrest, hunger, poverty, inflation, and all of that. Uh, I'd like to get your thoughts on this story first, Andy. Okay, it's good that the NLC is now um, trying to aid their view add the pressure to maybe probably to national issues. Good of it, um, this time they are not accusing the federal government of doing anything to workers. You know, first of all, uh, first of it, uh, NLC disassociated itself from that planned protest. And they are coming in through this angle at least for their voice to be heard. <laughs> it's, it's more better than threatening the federal government on strike and all that. So they, they are trying to tell the federal government, address the issue, that has to do with the protests, a very issue of hunger, because the NLC is also being affected. Members of the NL NLC. Of course, they're Nigerians. So ordinarily, they are trying to just talk about national issues, not on workers' welfare this yes. time around. I give it to them. All right, Ambassador. Well, I uh, want to say that the NLC has spoken well, but their presentation is not uh, a little bit uh, balanced or complete. In what way? I think they should have also condemned some areas of criminality during that uh, protest. We are all Nigerians. We saw, we, we watched that there were areas where there was criminality, there was a loss of properties, and then they only talked about the loss of lives, which all of us, we condemn. So when we are condemning uh, what is where government did not do well, we should also condemn the areas where citizens did not do well. So I want to say it's a good one, but they should have also uh, uh, condemned what was wrong during that protest. Was not the, only, the killing was not the only thing that was wrong as Nigerians. Properties were destroyed and then the people's uh, activities were you know, affected. Now, having said that, on the issue of uh, uh, NLC trying to ask government to release all detainees, uh, yes, it's a good call, but mine will be on the premise whereby those who are detained weren't the criminals, those who went and vandalized properties, those who went about doing things that were not peaceful anymore in the guise of protest. 
So if the investigations are carried out, and sincerely I want to call on the Nigerian police, uh, any relevant authorities where they have those that were arrested during this uh, past uh, end bad governance protest. After the investigation, those who are found not wanting should be innocently released. But those who perpetrated criminal activities intentionally, I think they should be disciplined to end uh, this kind of uh, criminality in our society. We can't encourage our, you know, support such kind of activities. I, I, wouldn't, I don't think that the NLC are in any way supporting that those activities but now they're talking on the gov to the government so when they're calling on the government they tell the government what they want them to do you see when you are when we talk about government like i always say government is not spirit government is human being so if you are referencing to the president of nigeria it's simply the ahmed bola Tenebu you are talking to so if you are referencing to the police you are referencing to the igp who is also a human being so government is not spirit. I've always emphasized this all the time. Government is human being, just like NLC. NLC is human being. NLC is not spirit. So if so what, what, what is your what are you trying to say? My my take is that if you are asking the president, if the NLC is asking, yes, the if the NLC is the, when you say government, federal right. government, the arrowhead is Mr. President. If you talk about NLC, the arrowhead is the uh, president of NLC. So what we are trying to say is that. In their appeal to government, which the is the federal president, government. you should also state that you never supported this kind of activities that was no longer peaceful during the protest. You know, it becomes balanced. Now, having said that, we all condemn the killing. We have also tried to look at, again, they also talked about the federal government looking at uh, issues that caused the protest. That has to do with uh, hunger, that has to do with insecurity and all that. I'm sure that part of what the vice president has said is a way of handling the food insecurity, the resources that the president has uh, created. My brother, when he was talking about uh, trying to uh, uh, reference the Minister of uh, Livestock with NDDC, not really. The Northern Nigeria had what they call the Northern Development Commission right now, which is to which is saddled with the responsibility of taking a overall responsibility of developing the Northern Nigeria. So the Ministry of Livestock is just an addition to our general national life. But like he reiterated that the Northern Nigeria are more into livestock business, not that the Southern Nigeria we are not into it. So I would also like to uh, state that the federal government on the issue of ensuring that farmers in the northern Nigeria are being encouraged and supported. I think there is a story that talks about the provision now and how they can go back to farm. I think it's part of the measures of government if it's properly to hunger, like yeah, if, if properly yes implemented okay. like my brother will always talk about. You know, I believe that we'll be able to come out of this food uh, insecurity. Okay. But hunger. talking about the NLC calling for um, the government to do something, federal government to do something about those people who lost their lives, calling for a day for um, solidarity for everybody, you know, for them. Now, um, let's look at how much has been done ever since that happened. Because still, the NLC had to call for this. I don't know how much, although the president during his speech, his nationwide broadcast, mentioned it and said he condoles with the families who lost their loved ones. But let's look at how much um, the federal government has done concerning that and how much has been said concerning that. You know, um, yesterday, no, on Saturday, I... I Bunched into a scenario where someone was trying to talk to the other person and the guy wasn't even answering. So at a time, the other one got angry and said, Why are you not answering me? And I said, <laughs> jokingly, and I said, I want to behave to you the way the president behaved to the oh protesters. <laughs> so oh my God. Why, why you I'm not sure that I not believe that the president <laughs> behaved that way to the protesters. No, no, no. He said from the from his last analysis, he said that the, the, when the president spoke to the people, it was when the person was supposed to speak to the people. But let's not get there. No, no, Continue. the the the, oh, um, the president what since then what has happened? 
after the protest, ordinarily the president have handled it in his own wisdom, the way it ought to be. And the president was also, the protest was, I think, stayed there for, ten days. There for 10 days. Yes. Probably it has ended. And then I give it to the government if they've handled it in such a way that it did not proceed. But why we call, why NLC is calling for those that we are mishandled? It also, um, um, it should also tell us that the, the, there are policemen that were seen on social media shooting live ammunition. So it means that the federal government or the police hierarchy also need to fish out this, this person. So why he was even saying that they should get the criminals, they should get this and all that, those that were being shot at, the police have not come to explain that they were the criminals. So it means the policemen that were doing that, they were carrying out such shooting. We saw, I saw on social media, it's all over social media, should also be fished out. Come and tell us, why were you shooting? And all that. So, and if the president had also, or it, not even just the president, if all those who have been in government from 19, whatever year, up to this moment have done the right thing, the protest even wouldn't have led to the extent of people protesting and then carrying food. They are looking for what to eat. So, in all of this, did they, which other big government official house did they get to to get this food? It was still men, the masses doing harm to the masses. So, the, this would have, this ought to have been stopped. This ought to have been handled. So, the government had to sit up. They even need to do more. After the protest, come up. If you couldn't even address the issue because the address by the president, so many persons condemned it that it didn't even contain anything. Let people begin to see development. This was the reason they, they, they protested. Let's go beyond the minimum wage. How about the employment area and all that? So well, I mean, we're looking that. at, we're actually looking at the aftermath of the protest, the things that went on, in fact, during the protest, right? The things that went on during the protest, like, like what you said, the people who died, and then not much being said. And that's why some people are calling for the sack of the police IG at the moment, because according to them, something should have been done. And I'm asking, have we really gotten to that point in Nigeria where lives will be lost and, you know, life just goes on like nothing just happened? The other day, we had a guest in the studio who was talking, making reference to this, and he said, uh, well, lives will be lost. It's a protest, so lives will be lost. That one is a normal thing. And I'm like, where have we gotten to in Nigeria where we have a protest, lives were lost, we saw videos, like you have said, even though the police came out to say that no security operative shot any live ammunition. But then nothing happens. Like, we just move on. You know, the, the protest has ended. Can we just eat rice, drink, and have fun? No, yes. You see, the, the truth is, Nigerians, some Nigerians are also calling for investigation of, of course. what happened. So we have to wait till the investigation report is out. No, so Nigerians calling for investigations to what has happened is not the same with investigations that are going on concerning what has no, happened. It, yes, you see... They are not the same. You see, when you allege... Let us understand this, first of all, that the responsibility of government and the responsibility of Nigerian police force is to enforce and maintain law and order. Of course. Now, part of government responsibility is to protect lives and properties. If you go and begin to burn down a building, the police will not watch you begin to perpetrate the burning down of building in the name of uh, protests. They won't watch you. They'll shoot you on the spot. I, I, that's not what I'm saying. Okay. Now, they won't watch you. Now, also, when you have a peaceful protest, peaceful, like I told people that in River State, the first day and second day of the protest, yes. I was here, and I commended the protesters of River State, right? That because they have maintained the rule of peaceful uh, protest. Were they harassed by police? No. I saw the Nigerian police civil defense were with the protesters in River State. 
the Nigeria Air Force helicopter was uh, hovering round. Nobody was uh, manhandled. There were scenarios we even saw DPOs of a division. At, I don't want to mention it, but I think I know the DPO. Was even with the protesters. They were, you know, hailing and all of that. So it was fun. Now, let me say that I will commend the IGP and Mr. President after commending the protesters for expressing their grievances and their agitations. One, for the protest, the suspicion of uh, uh, people who want to use it to break down law and order in Nigeria. Yes. I want to commend the IGP for ensuring that at all relevant uh, security operatives that Nigeria did not go to the state of anarchy. I give it to them. Okay. Number two, I would also like to commend Mr. President for taking time to uh, uh, exhibit his democratic nature. Because there are some presidents who wouldn't have even allowed such thing to take place. It would have been more the bloody. The protest itself? Yes, it would have been more bloody. But what did they do? They shut down government offices in most states to allow protesters to have their day. Now, again, on the issue of uh, uh, saying uh, uh, what has happened after the protests. Yes. Part of the things that have happened as pa after the protests is one of these uh, stories we are going to look at. The Agro Rangers uh, 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 formation. Because part of our challenge that we have been asking is insecurity of the farmers, which is causing the hunger in the land. Because if I can farm and provide food for myself, and because of insecurity, I can no longer do that. It's a wake-up call. So I think that Mr. President have equally given attention on that area by the formation of that agro rangers uh, 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 from the civil defense. So I think my call and my prayer should be that these agro rangers now should be able to ensure. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, when we we'll we'll get, get to that, to, we'll uh, get that uh, but, but do you know also think there. that the reason why you, you know is is not? I don't also agree on the part where he said, if it were to be some president, it would have been bloody. You don't stop protesters. This is democracy. You understand? You don't. And do you not also think that it's possible that why the president couldn't even act? It's because he knows he's guilty. The government is guilty. It may not even be him. Like he has always said, this whole thing didn't start from my administration. So the government could also have seen themselves as being guilty. The police couldn't also have acted because they're also going through the same hell the masses are going through. So it was, it was the right thing to do was to protect the people from hoodlums who will hijack the protests. But what does the constitution even say? Like, they played their roles. The constitution talks about them protecting the lives of properties, uh, people and properties, of right? Course. Lives and properties. Of course. So what, what are the security operatives supposed to be doing on ground, if not protecting the people? Have we not seen in this, in, not even in this country, where protesters were even tear gas? That during this particular protest, during, right? no, not even in this. Not what in this happened particular. in this protest? In this protest, protest they said it, they alleged it happened. That, uh, of course, they alleged it happened. Yes, but the point here is some of the states maintained. So many persons maintained their ground. The police could have also maintained their ground because they are also part of this system. They are, how much is their salary? How much motivation do they get from the government? Let's even forget about someone doing his job. So the government at the time felt guilty. This is my opinion. Felt guilty. And there's no way you should come up to stop the protesters. If the government didn't feel guilty, the president would have even come up to address the nation before the protest. And even when he did, there was nothing much to say. So all the president should do, all they should do, is go back to the drawing board. Come out, tell the people this is the way forward, not to continue in the same way. I listened to one of the presidents, this is the president's daughter and all that, I listened to that on social media, where she was saying, how can you put people just to please them? Bring technocrats, bring people who can, who have the mind to change this nation, not people who you want to compensate because they worked for you or one or two other reasons. So the, moving forward, the president should change, it. in fact, he should change his cabinet from the ones that are not effective, from the ones that are not active, from the ones that are not proactive. 
change the cabinet, go back to the drawing board, begin to impact on the lives of the citizens, begin to go into development. You, you talked about the president telling the people the way forward. I call you for another broadcast on this matter. It does, it, do we, should we even end one pro broadcast? There should be media chats. There should be, there should be a channel of communication between the president and the people. That is even one mistake the president has been making. That's one major mistake this administration has been making. There have never been media chat. In fact, not the media chat where they give journalists questions to ask. Throw the question open. Hear from the people. What's the problem? What do you want? Go back to your drawing board. Decide on the area to tackle. But in a situation where the president will just call your address, because he will go back to Asrock, everybody that are surrounded in Asrock may, may be spray singers. And you won't even know what the people are passing you, through. You see, my, my brother, you've spoken very well, and I appreciate your presentation. We are all agreeing that things are not well with this country, and the president has never said all is well with Nigeria. And most times we must understand that whatever the president says, the governors and the local government chairmen are the ones to help implement them. When we talk about the issue of insecurity, governors receive, allocate billions of naira for security votes because the, the law gives them that privilege to get allocation for themselves, including local government chairmen, to ensure that there is uh, protection of lives and pro uh, property, there is safety in their local domains. So when most times our focus is on the president, can I tell you, like in the issue of the fuel subsidy, the resources that were saved from subsidy are now being allocated to state and local government. The allocations of state has grossly increased because of why the federal government believed that the states and the local government are more closer to the people. They are the ones that will understand how to tackle this uh, effect of uh, uh, removal of fuel subsidy. So when we are talking about President, President, for me, if the focus will be on Mr. President, I think I will quickly suggest that resources meant for development of Nigerians should no longer be given to governors. Governors and local government chairmen should no longer get uh, allocation so that our problems will be solved by Mr. President directly. But if our problems at various levels, what makes up Nigeria is the 36 state, right? And 700 and uh, there are about the local government, which receives allocation every month from the federal government to ensure that our citizens have a better welfare. So I want to call So if you feel much is not being done with this, okay, you want no, to come I, Yeah, I have, I have my disagreements in okay. certain areas he pointed out. First, you said, the, if, it's, if you have said the, the, um, the, the, the governors have a location, security votes, that's, I agree. But we've also heard several the, gov the governors telling you that they are not in charge of security. The federal government should really wish is in the, in the, is in the jurisdiction of the federal government. In fact, they ask are just to take care, take care, care takers of the security. They've said it. In fact, of course, before you even give some orders, you have to hear from the IG. Okay. So we, sorry, we even had in this state where a state governor was crying that the commissioner, in fact, the commissioner said, you must take order from me. I will come to you to take orders. And the governor was even called tyrant in this state. This state, I'm not even saying that. I'm not talking about far. That's part of it. Now, when you also say the subsidy money, is now being shared among the governors. Now, which, where is the money for oil? Proceed from oil. It's, 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 it's just clear, clearly, it's clear that the federal government may obviously be doing nothing. Or they are doing something we have not seen with the money they said they got from, from um, uh, fuel subsidy remover. And they told us they make billions monthly. How could that have been shared to the governors and the federal government have not come to say they shared recently, they shared some billions. And the governor of your state, Shane Markin, they said the money given to us has to do with COVID-19 reimbursement. Then it wasn't even that the federal government was giving the sharing money amongst them. No, you see, when they talk about uh, removal of uh, fuel subsidy, it's still money generated from our crude. Not that there's a spiritual money 
that is now given to Nigeria because of removal of subsidy. So, again, if a state governor tells me, or local government chairman, that I am not in charge, I cannot take responsibility of the security of my state, do not allocate or appropriate any money to yourself for security purpose. So you cannot be collecting resources for security. And then when there is a insecurity and breakdown of law and order, you say, because uh, the IGP, the, 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 I, I'm not in charge of uh, security, then why are you collecting the money? So if you cannot do the work for which you are collecting the money, keep that money, channel it to other purposes, right? Or carry that allocation meant for security vote that you think should be used for the security of your state or local government, send it to the federal government. So that when there is security challenges, your blame to the federal government will be justified. But not when you are collecting the money, you are eating the money. You, you then, can't say they are eating the no, money. No, no, when I say eating, spending the money. Okay. Uh -huh. Then when it is now a, a challenge of uh, insecurity, I'm not in charge of security, why are you collecting that money if you know you can't do the work? So Danny, from your explanation, are you calling for state policing? I also accept if the governors have said they are not in charge of security because, like I, I've stated here, the governor have even explained, I'm not a governor, they've explained that they are like caretakers. You see most of them buying vehicles, they tell you that security vote is what they use, even if you know that the money most of them don't even make use of it. Buying That's vehicles, also where I buying which vehicles? You right? see them buying vehicles, trying to maintain police offices, okay. trying to provide what they need, their welfare and all that. That's the level that we they can go. But for you to now be in charge, to an extent, they say the federal government is in charge. It's like when you talk about the uh, power, if they tell the federal government is in charge. That's the same thing that has been happening to our security architecture. You see, for me, why I, I will not even subscribe to state policing. I will never. Why? Now, if we want to maintain law and order, what are the root causes of this insecurity? One is greed. Greed not from the federal government alone. Greed from states. Greed from local government political leaders. So if we are doing what we ought to do, fairness, injustice, you will not even be looking, are we, is it not my community? If things are distributed amicably, are we going to have insecurity in my community that I will not be blaming uh, the president for not uh, making sure that my community is safe? When you create activities that will create insecurity in your localities, in your community, in your state, and then you now want to blame the uh, federal government for not responding to the insecurity, who are you deceiving? So my point is that as leaders at various levels, we must be responsible to the welfare of our people. Right. If, our, if our local communities are faring well, why will you be talking about the insecurity? Yeah. So I want to feel that part of the security vote that governors are taking, local government chairmen are taking, if you know that this community, this is what they need to make life better for them, give it to them. Okay, at this point, uh, Ambassador, sorry to quote you there, but we will be taking some minutes off. We'll go on a short break and when we return, the conversation will continue with other stories. Please stay with us.